Hello again, A History of Christianity by Kenneth Scott Latterette, page 310, continuing his discussion of the founding of the church in Bulgaria. We have remarked that Boris wished to have a patriarch of his own for Bulgaria. It may be that his motive was in part to make certain that the Bulgarian church would not be used to further the political designs of either the Byzantines or the Germans. It is probable that he at least wished to have his realm and his church on a full equality with Constantinople. We've reported how he bargained with both the Pope and the Patriarch of Constantinople to attain his ambition and took advantage of the rivalry between the two seas to gain his end. Boris did not at once obtain a Patriarch, but in 870 Ignatius consecrated a Bulgar as Archbishop and sent him with ten bishops and many priests to his new see. In spite of the surrender by Photius in 879-880 as part of his peacemaking with Rome of his patriarchal powers in Bulgaria, Boris continued relations with Constantinople. This was natural, for that city was much nearer than Rome. He sent a younger son, Simeon, to Constantinople to be educated as a monk, presumably with the hope that he would return to head the church in Bulgaria, thus keeping both state and church in the hands of one family. Some of the Slavonic clergy who had been trained by Constantine and Methodius and who had found their old, their old homes impossible were welcomed by Boris. The latter was trying to bring about an amalgamation of the Bulgars with the subject Slav majority so that that end and to that end was encouraging Slavonic literature. One of the exiles, Clement of Okrid, probably a Byzantine Slav, was sent by Boris to Macedonia, and the, there established a school for training clergy and translating sacred books. Later, he became a bishop. In 889, Boris resigned his throne and retired to a monastery which he had founded near his capital as a center of Slavic Christian culture, and was succeeded by his eldest son, Vladimir. However, Vladimir led a pagan reaction Around him gathered the nobles who were opposed to the innovations of Boris, Christianity, the new customs associated with that faith, and the centralizing of authority in the monarch. After a few years, Boris, thoroughly aroused, emerged from his retirement, deposed Vladimir, had him blinded and placed in confinement, called a national council, and had Simeon chosen for the vacancy. He also induced the assembly to substitute Slavonic for Greek as the language of the Bulgarian church. Feeling his life work now to be secure, Boris once more retired to his monastery. Under Simeon, Bulgaria enjoyed its golden age. Simeon renounced the monastic life for which he had been trained, but he furthered the growth of Bulgarian literature. This was in Slavonic and was made up mostly of translations from Greek. It was from Bulgaria that Slavonic literature spread to other Slavic peoples. Under Simeon, the formal conversion of the land to Christianity was completed. He also fulfilled his father's vision of a realm legally on an equality with the Byzantine Empire. He surrounded himself with the splendor and ceremonial which he had seen in Constantinople, assumed title of the Tsar and Autocrat of all Bulgarians, thus giving his crown a title on a par with that of the Macedonian dynasty in Constantinople, and had the Bulgarian bishops declare in 918 the Bulgarian church fully independent, that is, autocephalous, and place a patriarch at its head. The patriarch crowned Simeon, hailing him with the imperial title. This, at first, the patriarch of Constantinople was unreconciled to these changes, but Rome seems to have adopted them, and in 927, the year of Simeon's death, Constantinople also assented. The Bulgarian church was orthodox in doctrine, but independent in administration. By Simeon's initiative, it was the first to establish the tradition, later characteristic of the family of orthodox churches, of being reciprocally independent of one another administratively but of agreeing in doctrine and regarding the patriarch of Constantinople as a kind of 
primus inter pares, that is, first among equals, among their heads. In the first half of the 11th century, less than a century after Simeon's death, the Byzantine emperor Basil II conquered the country, made it a Byzantine province, and canceled the Bulgarian Patriarchate. But Bulgaria continued to be professedly Christian. Just when and how the peoples of the Caucasus became Christians, we do not know. Conversion began well before the 6th century, but it continued after that time and seems largely to have been through Byzantine influence. Some of it was in the reign of Just, Justinian. The conversion of the Alans is said to have been in the 8th century. Contact with Byzantine commerce and culture by way of the Black Sea, along a Greek lake, furthered the process. The birth of the largest offshoot of the Byzantine church, that of Russia, was not to come until shortly after 950. Next time, the effect of the Byzantine environment on Christianity. Put in, I'll put in a link to our meditation on Revelation, actually, on the seven churches, because of the the schismatic nature of many Protestants, especially evangelicals, and, of course, the cults. We ask the question, which one of Revelation's seven churches would, J, would JWs or evangelicals attend? See you next time.